Today's Thursday, October 31st. And you all know what that means. Indie Stone just released their new Thursday dev blog, titled Hello Void. And in this one, we have some early initial tester feedback from people who have already got their hands on Build 42, scheduled improvements based on that said feedback, and of course, a few new images and videos. One last thing before we get into this video, if you enjoy it, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're new. We're so close to hitting 1000 subscribers, and it just so happens that my next video is going to be a huge one, so be sure you have notifications ready for that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into this dev vlog. And where better to start than the tester feedback, because I know you're all just itching to see where they're at with this build. They start off by saying overall that the first impressions have been quite positive, but let's see for ourselves. They sectioned off the comments in three different categories, the first one titled Darkness, the second one titled Zeds, and the third being General. I will go ahead and preface this by saying they probably left out a lot of quotes and these are probably just the best of the best, but this will at least give us a clearer view on where Build 42 is at. Let's begin with the testers' comments on the lighting, and while I'm doing that, enjoy the showcase of the new sanatorium coming to Build 42. I found I wasn't running into zombies like I usually would randomly scattered throughout the place, until an alarm came that was absolutely brutal. I didn't think it'd draw so many, and the darkness is unforgiving too. I was scrambling for lampposts for their spotlight, trying to fight off what was left chasing me until I was exhausted and able to finally rest. In regards to the darkness, I think it's perfect. I love the horror feeling of it. You really actually fully need a flashlight. There was a time flashlights barely had a reason to be in the game at all, so this is better. I had a great moment with the darkness change. I got cocky and had a small horde chase me. I ran into a store with a plan of trying to lose them out the back. I opened and closed behind me a random door inside to try to lose them. I was accidentally now stood in pitch black. I scrambled for the glowing light switch as the door was now being slammed by the chasing horde, only to realize I ran into the world's tiniest bathroom. Overall, I'm really excited to see how the new lighting affects my playthroughs. I'm really glad to hear that it's a lot scarier than it was before, and that flashlights actually have a use now. Let's get into the next part. Zeds. The playtesters begin by saying, The empty road felt really rural, like how I'd expect to drive down my road, both currently and in an apocalypse. Then I was just on my way out of Rosewood, and because it was foggy, I accidentally stumbled into the prison. Outside is crazy. I cannot imagine inside. Just started a new game in West Point with the aim of trying Louisville, and noticed the streets outside were very quiet with the occasional Zeds dotted about, and it gave off cool 28 Days Later vibes. I ran around building to building, thinking this is too easy, nothing is stopping me. When after bashing 15 Zeds heads in, muscle strain kicked in. Felt like a cool way of setting atmosphere without being too easy. Feels pretty balanced so far. That one seems like a comment from someone who hasn't played Zomboid in a while. Truly, the changes to grouping are so good. Probably the most quality of life change for me. It really makes the world feel more alive in a way. Instead of having zombies spread out everywhere, and having to do the same rinse and repeat method just to get into an area, now it really feels like I can sneak around and explore areas while losing a group, instead of knowing that I'm going to run into a ton more. Time for the general feedback. I really like how many different containers can be filled up with liquids now. Makes finding a drinking source way less frustrating. Thumbs up. I like the doors swinging open, and the game actually feels much smoother. Holy fuck, a basement. I wasn't expecting that. Man, it's awesome. Even though I've played in this area probably a hundred times, seeing the stairs go down and then finding this area just made it feel like I was playing the game for the first time again. Also, super happy with the traits. It was a bit of a shocker, Smoker's no longer OP. The voiceovers actually helped a lot with the immersion. I feel it. I like the brutalness of the combat. In terms of combat fatigue, needing to rest more, and training that skill up as you progress. It felt fun and fresh. Love the density. It's terrifying. I actually had to pull out the online PC map to compare. The only thing really noteworthy out of those, in my opinion, is that Smoker is no longer OP, 
which is gonna change how I play Zomboid. How about y'all? Tell me down below in the comments. Now we can move on to the second part of this dev blog, what they're improving. They start off this section with three statements. That the playtesters were in fact Project Zomboid mega fans, which I'm not too sure about that. Y'all tell me how y'all feel down below. And the current set of testers is extremely small, and that most of the bullet points came from the same people, which I'm guessing means there's probably three or four people testing it out right now. They got pointers on Z awareness, the discomfort system, and much more on the new additions that they'll keep their eye on. And they're still trying to get more feedback on elongated play sessions. They have five main sections to what they're improving. The first being combat tightening. Playtest sessions revealed that there were some combat irregularities that needed to be addressed, resulting in unfair deaths. This led the team down a deep dive into both some issues that have been introduced during Build 42 dev, and also some legacy issues from Build 41. The latter could explain some of the rare edge case combat irregularities that seasoned Build 41 players might have come across during their bouts of survival. They conclude that, by saying let's hope the result of this will bring some added consistency to combat in general. Next up, the team talks about crafting. They say the crafting UI needs more love and attention, and that it'll get it once they're 100% happy with the build menu. But I think instead of waiting until you're 100% happy with the build menu, that you should work on the crafting UI a little bit too. They continue by saying, For over the past half a year, we've had six people working on our new vision for crafting. As regular readers will know, delays with it have been a primary reason that things have been held back. During Build 42 development, we didn't see in enough safeguards should key members of the team become unavailable due to illness or personal matters. This is now very much a lesson that has been learned, and alongside new production and support staff who have been brought in over the past six months, this is not a bear trap we intend to ever step into again. It does seem like there were some undisclosed issues inside the team. Whether that be due to illness or personal matters, it doesn't really matter. And I hope they know that me and every other person in the Project Zomboid community has them in our hearts. In a special note for modders, something that has been a long-standing frustration is how difficult it is to add new player buildable tiles to the carpentry and metalworking right-click options. This came in a sharp relief for us when it also became frustrating to add new Build42 buildables into those same options. Previously, the code for all the tile building options was basically hard-coded into Lua. In Build42, we are using text file script definitions to populate the build options versus using hard-coded values. For the most part, the buildable scripts use the same format and syntax as the new Build42 crafting scripts. This means that in Build42, it should be a far, far simpler matter for modders to add new building options for their subscribers. Next up, animals. Animal and animal housemanry are currently in polishing bug fix mode waiting for more extended playtesting. On the negative side though, they're trying to improve the player's ability to draw their own animal zones, to ensure that animals and enclosures are fed, mating, and develop while the player is off screen. They do say that they have expanded their team and knowledge pool around this issue, and that they can now likely improve this. Z Awareness slash Stealth Something the new lighting in Z Spawn has flagged is that the new Z Awareness needs some polish. While its inclusion will not likely be a part of the unstable beta, we are rebalancing zombie senses so that they can better take into account sneak levels, zombie focus, and direction as per usual, but also take into account lighting, low obstacles like fences and bushes, and yes, weather effects like rain and fall. A lot of these seem like standard things. Last but not least, more reading material. They've been getting some player feedback that says that the posters and stuff that they've been releasing aren't exactly 90-ish and don't fit the graphic design of that generation. So they've been commissioning a friend named Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. They say that they're still happy with the ones they've had before, but they feel like the new look is vastly improved. Well, that's all the team had for us in this dev blog. It does seem like we're getting super close to an unstable release, which will hopefully be here by the end of the year. Indie Stone does have a tweet from earlier this year saying that it's going to be released this year, so if they don't, let's all, I don't know, not play Zomboid for a week. What can I say, we're all addicted. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe while you're down there. I make story-like Zomboid playthroughs over on my channel, so consider giving one of those a check out. 
The most recent one I just finished up is a story on Cleo Trucco, who was a truck driver before the world fell apart. You can go ahead and click it on screen if you want, but anyway, my name's SS Samurai 7 and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.